So this will be kind of an introduction tutorial uh, for people getting into Injustice uh, coming from a, a different fighting game or from scratch. So first off, you're going to want to uh, do the tutorial, right? Get used to some of the mechanics. I might explain them more a little bit. Um, but uh, I might I might touch upon a little bit, but just do this first and then come back here for reference, I guess, because I'll go in depth for more other stuff. So go to your practice options and if you're going to go competitive, um, then pick your characters after you select characters before you switch the stage. Go to match options with uh, square or, and then put, in, put on uh, competitive mode, okay? The competitive mode on you don't have to worry about you know the level differences and the stats in your gear you can use the gear but the stats on it won't affect the uh, in game okay okay so first thing um, before before we talk about anything is let's go to the uh, menu the wireless control preset and then look at these options at the bottom. So there's release check, which is negative edge. Special moves are executed on button release. I suggest turning this off at first. Um, Alternate control is for, um, it's a different motion. So in NRS games, uh, like in Justice of Mortal Kombat, some motions are performed by down and forward or back and forward. There's no uh, really diagonal inputs most of the time. There's a couple, but um, it's not needed. So if you've done like Ryu's Fireball in Street Fighter, it's a uh, smooth motion. That motion in this game is just down and forward rather than pushing the stick down and uh, pulling it toward the right. Okay, so uh, if you want like Street Fighter style or KOS style or um, inputs, you put the alternate control on. Um, if I have it off because I'm already used to how to put uh, inputs um, appropriately. Um, input shortcuts, um, try this off first, um, you can have this on if you're really having trouble, but I suggest trying, uh, your different controls to see how it works for you, and then going to input shortcuts. The thing is, this game holds the inputs for a, uh, little longer than usual, so, for example, if you try to go in a back down position and try to uppercut and react to an anti-air, uh, you might get a special move instead, um, which could be a problem, and you can take a big damage for it for messing up like that. So I uh, have this off at first, and then button shortcuts. I mean, it's a personal preference. It might work better depending on the peripheral you use. Like some people play on arcade stick, some people play on pad, um, even some people play on keyboard. But um, it's just uh, just you can either have a button for like throws and stuff. Or, or you can have, or interactables, or you can have a two button set. So I have this on. Um, so like, if, you know, throw in Street Fighter uh, is light kick and uh, light punch. So it's the same input. So if you're playing on RK stick, it's the exact same input for uh, two button throws. Okay. So let's get in to the movement. So if you're coming from a different game and you're going into this game. Uh, you're gonna realize that the uh, the way the characters move is a little different. So it's not. I mean, it's a little stiff. If you play the first game, the first game was really stiff in movement. But here now we have this uh, kind of like a little jerky. It's kind of smooth, kind of jerky. It's really hard to explain. I don't have the proper word for it. But uh, like if I walk backwards, I slow. If I'm walk forwards, I'm you know at a certain speed but if I just tap in the directions I'm going uh, a set distance you know like I can kind of it's it's easier for me to manage my range and they only did this for like since this game has very strong zoning zoning is where uh, you do things like projectiles and put them on the screen and make it hard for your opponent to traverse uh, without either you know doing something like a jump to get over it so that that's I mean that's a strategy zoning and <clears throat> zoning is really uh, a really um, common strategy in this game there's a lot of characters that can zone I uh, like Batman he can zone for one but uh, this kind of jerk motion helps 
like traverse the screen because I can tap forward and go down so I can duck. Um, we'll get into like why ducking in this game or how it works and stuff like that and the properties of moves. But uh, I can also get in ranges to, uh, you know, with punish basically. So and that's why the, the movement is going to feel different to you. So no one's really used to it unless you've already played uh, previous Injustice or uh, uh, Mortal Kombat uh, XL. So okay so um, there's a couple terms that I'll use but um, I'll try to explain them if I catch myself using a term that most people won't understand but uh, let's just talk about you know uh, just dashing in general uh, dashing is pretty fast for all characters it's a good way to get across the screen the stage is really big okay back dash um, is good for you know these are the dashes are good for, are mainly used for positioning right you want to advance or you need to retreat the thing with back dashes are they uh, have invincibility frames right invincible meaning they cannot get hit for a couple frames and I'm gonna go into frames if you don't understand what a frame is and how they work but it's basically active for a certain amount of time and then they can get hit and you could be countered okay so if you if you punish a backdash after it's act like there's you backdash and then there's recovery before you can block so you see how I input the backdash and it I just don't automatically block okay that's because there is uh, recovery and I'll go go into that when I talk about uh, frame data but if you if you uh, hit him as he's recovering before he gets into the block um, you're gonna get a counter. So, and there's also uh, interactables. Uh, depending on the character you use, you use the interactable different. So Batman is, I believe, is a. I think they call it a agility character. He's not a real power character like Superman. So he can swing, for, or he's a tech character actually. So I think tech and like agility characters can swing from this. But if you're a power character like Wonder Woman and Superman, they would just pick this up and uh, throw it at you. So they. Um, it might be gadget character. There's anyway, all characters will use interactables different than um, other characters, just depending on their archetype. So that's one. So now we're gonna talk about. Um, let's see. Let's go into when you use. Uh, go go in the. Um, if you go into the move list, you can actually select move through a triangle. So I'm gonna tag uh, uh, this palm strike. I'm gonna tag Crusader Kick, and I'm gonna tag uh, what is it? What is it? What is it? Uh, tumbler, all right. So I selected a high. Oh, let me let me select one more move. Let me select uh, Hammer Fist. Okay. So Palm Strike, right? Is this attack? Crusader uh, Crusader Kick is this attack? Tumbler is this one? Okay, and Hammer Fist is this one. So, um, well, let's talk about jumping first, all right? So jumping um, to block, there is cross-ups in this game. In Mortal Kombat, if you come from Mortal Kombat into Injustice, say you started Mortal Kombat XL and coming into this game, in Mortal Kombat, you had a block button, right? Um, <clears throat> there's no block button, so you have to block the direction of the attack depending on where your character is now in this game there you can turn a lot of things into a cross-up right so if you come from <coughs> street fighter um i don't know like uh i can't remember in five who really has one i know in four like the shotos like ryu and ken i think uh ryu can still do it in street fighter 5 but basically if he if he if you had someone in the corner and you jumped in with light kick right he would cross you up you have to block the different direction but he would land in front so there's a lot of those in this game so um to block in this game you pretty much have to hold the opposite direction um of the opponent okay so if i did a cross up if say the oops the uh, yellow batman is on the left side and i jump and i end up on, i do an attack on the uh, other side i'm sorry let me get back on my side ooh 
he would have to block the other direction. So instead of holding back, it would actually turn into uh, forward if he was still facing this direction. So it basically it basically switches. So you always have to block away, and that's how you block the uh, cross up. You block away and you hold it back. So whatever the uh, direction is, okay. Now for uh, we'll get into the normal. So this is a high, right? So highs in this game mean or that you can duck it okay you can block it standing or you can duck it so if i set the ai to block always and duck right and there's no blocking animation right he's not blocking the attack he's not taking <clears throat> any damage or any pressure really he's not <clears throat> Yeah, the, the normal is whiffing okay so i'm gonna call like buttons uh normal sometimes so just regular attacks those are normals uh a move like uh let's see like the grapple is a special move so but i'll call i'll call buttons normals um every now and then but this this button this normal whiffs on crouching because it's a high okay now I'll put him back to standing right so this is a low crusader kick so to block this you have to uh, block low obviously you cannot stand up to block it okay so um yeah so instead of a high if I see someone's crouching to make them block something I would have to do uh, a low attack and then next I will do uh, tumbler. It's the overhead, okay? Overhead means uh, they have to block it high, okay? So if you're crouching, so if I took him off block, uh, he's gonna get hit. Oh, and I, <laughs> let me put him crouching first. He's gonna get hit, because he's not standing up, okay? He has to block it standing, that's overhead. And then a mid, Hits both standing and crouching, but you can block it standing and crouching. Okay, so a mid is not an overhead. It just it's a move that is able to hit someone crouching. Okay, so uh, just remember highs will whiff on crouching, lows will uh, open somebody up or hit somebody that's standing up the block, and then overheads you have to block high. Okay. So those are the uh, buttons, and it's pretty important when you're like taking pressure. Okay, so I'm going to go into strings. Um, we're gonna let me see. Let me take these moves off. Uh, untag everything. So strings are um, Street Fighter doesn't have them. Uh, for one, but uh, games like Tekken and DOA, they have strings, okay? And uh, you can, uh, they have dial in combos, okay? So we're gonna look at the Injustice string. So I'll probably talk about this string a lot. It's actually a good example. Um, so this is performed with um, uh, one, one, two. So uh, let's talk about number notation. So when you read combo videos, and notations like if you're looking on forums and stuff like that and you see the inputs and they put one one two or one one three uh basically uh light attack is a one heavy attack is a two all right uh or i'm sorry light attacks one medium attack is two heavy attack is three and then you have trait which is four so each uh, if you've done the tutorial now each character has their own trait the trait button would be the number four okay so this string is one one two it's a high mid mid so the first hit will whiff on crouching but the rest will connect but it's in in injustice games there's a and mortal Kombat, the newer ones they have dial in combo so what that means is i don't know if you can hear it but i inputted the all three of the buttons um before the whole move even came out right so usually when you hit a button right it comes out at the same time but in this game you don't have to wait right you can just put it in okay and that helps uh 
do certain combos a certain strings and hit confirming hit confirming is you see something hit and then you'd like convert off it you do something about it you either continue the combo um basically because it hit and if it blocked if they block it then you don't keep continuing because you might lead to something unsafe or you have to do something to keep yourself safe so uh <clears throat> the injustice string we're gonna look at this string and we're gonna look at the uh vengeance string so this one is performed with 113 so there's uh jailing is um basically there's like no gaps in between something right uh, if there's a gap you can do something about it uh whether it's armor moves which there are in this game and or maybe something like a parry or you can interrupt it uh with a button so i set the ai to do uh oops never not anymore i messed up so i'm gonna set him to do this string right So if I'm blocking, I can't do anything in between. I, I mean, I could do something after the before the high whiffs, but I can't interrupt the last two hits. So as soon as I block that second hit, I can't press a button in between. Some some uh, uh, strings have gaps in it that you can't do anything about. So like, I'm gonna um, re record this string. Invention string, okay. So there's a gap in there. Um, so I'm gonna try to press a button uh, before the last hit. So I try to press uh, low down one, okay. The, low, uh, the jab, this button right here. So let's see what happens when I try to do that before the last hit connects. I'm gonna get counter hit, right? So there's gaps in some of the strings, and that can um, either be one used to bait you into doing something that you're not supposed to do to get hit, or it's an opportunity for you to uh, do something about it on defense. Either what if it's like, for example, Batman can uh, parry. Let's uh, start this over. So the gap is not tight enough where I can't do a parry. So I can parry in between. Okay, so that's basically it. So some strings will gel you and you have to block the whole thing before we can do anything about it. Some strings will have gaps and you can do something about it. Uh, you got to test it between characters. So if you're playing against someone or a character you're not familiar with and you see yourself getting hit and you're wondering why and you try to do something, you have to go go in training mode, try to find the string that, that uh, opened you up and uh, figure out if there's a gap in it or if it jails you or you're just pressing buttons at the wrong time or picking the wrong option as an example so <clears throat> we're gonna use jab as an example uh jab right here we're just gonna look at the info right uh where it says frame data on the right okay so basically the easiest way to explain frame data is uh if you've ever seen a flipbook animation right each picture it's its own still right so if you flip through the whole uh, book, you know, you get the whole, you know, animation to come out, right? It's basically the same thing uh, in fighting games. So fighting games run at about 60 frames per second. Uh, so this button, it said it was at seven frame startup, okay? And that means it takes seven frames. That means you can make a still, seven stills uh, of this punch, okay? So after seven, if you made a flip book of this punch, it would take uh, basically seven. Uh, seven still seven pictures seven frames for it to come out so that's really all it means so when someone says you know something is like three frames or you know they're just talking about the speed of the button so in this game uh, generally uh, the fastest button that you can put out is six frames okay Gen I think that I don't think anyone has any five frame buttons in this game specials are different you can do uh, some specials are really fast and we'll discuss those later because those have uh, different properties in this game but uh back to the jab so it starts up in six frames and it's active uh for two frames so what that means is so for two frames of that button it can um 
it it's uh it's active basically it can hit something right so not you know see like you know how he has to actually extend his arm forward right i'm not hitting as soon as you know he moves his arm the the, the punch has to connect okay so there's two frames uh, where it's active where the move can hit you now recovery three 13 frames so what that means is recovery frames is basically like the amount of time the amount of frames you can think of like f just think of frames as like uh how how fast something is right so the recovery for is 13 frames so that means there is 13 f see i can't just keep punching right i just can't like i mean i can't oh, what i mean is uh like you don't see just the the arm sticking out the whole time right and i'm just repeating punching at high speed now there is like startup and there's amount of time before i can do it again so uh 13 frames of recovery means you know i after i do the punch there's 13 frames before i can do anything else like either block or do it or a different move okay so that's really all it means so something that has high recovery is uh people will say it's unsafe it's unsafe because it's high recovery and you can check it you know in your move list everything will show if it says na that means uh the move has like weird properties uh in this game when you're trying to understand how things work and it says na it's basically or just understand like advantage and stuff like that it always goes by like the last hit but since something like battering uh it's a projectile so that can hit just about uh anywhere and stuff it's it's really hard to uh set or just put that information in so uh back to the back to the jab um recovery 13 frames uh block advantage two frames okay so let's see i'm gonna set the cpu to do the jab oops that's not what I want. Okay. Oops. Actually, I'll, I'll make him do uh, two jabs. Okay. All right. So it's block advantage two. So what that means is that there is two frames. So if I'm blocking that jab, um. There is two extra frames before I can do uh, anything about it. So, if I tried the jab right after he jabbed, I wouldn't be able to get it out. It's actually really hard. I'm actually on block screen. Not really. I should be able to do something about it. Hold on. Okay. See, so yeah, it says counter on the on the top right. That means I try to do the same, the, this this button, the same button he's using right after. And the only reason I can't do that is because he's at block advantage. Uh, I mean, he's at, uh, yeah, he's at block advantage two, and I am negative two. So if I'm doing something that's plus, that means my block advantage is, you know, I'm, I'm in the plus frame. So when you watch other videos and other people talk about frame data, it's, that's, I mean, that's what, that's what they mean. If something is plus, that means there is an amount of frames that they can do and the other person can't do anything about. So blocking this jab means I am plus he, or if I make someone block my jab, I am going to be at plus two and there's two additional frames he can't do anything about. So, um, applying it to this button right here so seven frames it's a seven frame startup right and if I put someone in uh, if I press if I hit them with the button on block okay seven minus two right is five okay the only reason I did that is because there's two frames that he cannot do anything so essentially my button before he can do anything turns into a five frame button because i mean th th there's the math so there's a little little bit of math there's a lot of numbers if you're trying to really break it down and understand everything so uh since he's in block it if i did jab two times if i make him block the first one right seven frames start up block advantage plus two 
Okay, if I did it again, since here's two frames, he cannot do anything about it. Essentially, my jab comes out in five frames. There's five, it's, it's five frames, okay. Um, it still comes out in seven, but the, uh, he would have to do a move uh, four, uh, either in five frames or less to either trade or beat me out. Okay, then he has to do something faster. And since there's nothing, generally nothing, that... Um, is a button that is uh, five frames or faster he would just be stuck and block and blocks then okay so that's just how like some pressure works now hit advantage is almost the same thing um, but it works differently compared to games like Street Fighter so <clears throat> um, we're gonna use there we're gonna use the injustice string Batman string is called the injustice string. So, uh, see, his hit advantage is four, right? So if I if I did this, right, and since I am uh, plus four after this hits, there's four frames where he cannot do anything. Okay, there's generally more advantage or more time I can do something before he can. If something hits rather than uh, something is blocked when uh, things are not people when uh, moves knock down there's tons of advantage because you know look how much time I can do something uh, before he can even get up and do something okay so when you're looking for like setups or what moves you can do in the meantime or how you can set up things uh, you just look at how much hit advantage it gives and see what you can do in that time frame before they can do anything about it. Okay, to explain how hit advantage uh, works, I guess, in, in uh, as you fight, we're gonna use this injustice string, that's a uh, plus four on hit, and then we're gonna use three other buttons. So I've recorded the AI to do this string, which is plus four after it hits you, into face bash, which is 14 frames. Okay, so I'm gonna use uh, palm strike, which is seven frames, Hammer Fist, which is 10 frames, and then Face Bash, which is 14. So I have the AI doing the string, which is 4 on hit, into 14 frame Face Bash. So let's see what happens if I try to use those three different buttons after he hits me with the uh, Justice String, uh, Justice String, which is a uh, 4 on hit. Okay, so I have the CPU doing the Injustice String into face bash so face bash is 14 frames but the injustice string string is plus four on hit so if he inputted face bash at the fastest possible time after the string hits the fastest the move will come out before i can do anything about it is 10 frames so what does that mean for me on uh defense or if he tries to do face bash after that means I would have to do something that's uh, 10 frames or faster so palm strike being at 7 if I input it correctly should counter him every time and what that means is he would have to do something that is faster to beat me out so as you can see it countered him when I inputted the uh, palm strike so let's go into the next button <coughs> which is hammer fist now hammer fist is uh, 10 frames okay and I just said if he inputs face bash at the fastest possible time it uh, will only I mean it's only uh, 10 frames right that's the I mean that's the fastest it'll come out before I can do anything if I press if he does face bash at the fastest possible time and I do hammer fist at the fastest possible time the moves will trade meaning n both players will take damage so that's all what trading means so as you can see it both said counter for at the, for uh both players both players took damage so that means you know the moves traded so he would to avoid the trade he would have to do something he would have to do something faster to beat my move and i would have to done something faster to beat his move all right so we're gonna look at the next button which is um uh, face bash the same button that he's using so it'll say counter hit uh, Every time I try to do it and this is also a good way to explain 
active frames. So as I do the move, you will see me like the animation start up for face bash. As you can see there, it started up, but it never connected. So and the move wasn't even active yet. So it will beat me out every single time. It's not me. I mean, even like he would have to do it mad slow after the uh, injustice ring for me for me to even like trade or beat him out. Just because at even at the fastest possible time of me doing face bash. It will just will never beat him out. He's got too much hit advantage. So in this game, uh, when you get hit by things like this with advantage, it doesn't mean you can do a normal after at that same speed. It just means that you know it can start a mix up. So let me see if I can show uh, kind of a mix up. All right. So we're gonna talk about like just punishing things. Uh, so we're gonna use a Robin sweep. I have Robin and Green Lantern. He's gonna do a sweep, which is minus eleven. And then we're going to do use Green Lantern's Lantern's Might skill, which is Lift, which is uh, 11 frames. So with specials, there's a thing called Reversal. Reversal is something you can do um, pretty much out of block stun or like on wake up. So as you can see here, I have him set to do it after you block something. Now, when you're picking your punishes, right, it could be the appropriate... Uh, move to punish it but you have to keep in mind the move has to be uh, in the right range so as you can see the lanterns might lift can only punish at a certain range which is pretty close the sweep is 11 frames but if i'm farther away the lift just will not reach in time there's a travel time so um with that said we're gonna talk about this string uh robin's disobeying order string it's just, it's i think it's, it's back one two and then we're gonna have Green Lantern. I'm gonna I'm gonna try to punish it with Green Lantern's uh, Palm Strike. I think or it's a uh, his medium attack, which is 10 frames. So the string is minus 10, but the uh, move my move is also uh, 10. But why is it not punishing? It's because in NRS games. Uh, when you come out of block with a button, you can't reversal a button. It will not say reversal coming out of block when you press a button. It takes one additional frame for you to come out of block. So your 10 frame move coming out of block actually turns into 11. So just that's just how it works in this type. So if you're coming from a game like Street Fighter, I'm going to have uh, basically Ryu do a stand light kick to punish. Uh, Balrog's rush punch, which is minus 4, or his uh, medium DP, so or light DP. As you can see, um, either one will work. There's no extra frame it takes Ryu to come out of block. So it's just a little different coming into Injustice or Mortal Kombat, I guess, is that uh, you have that additional frame. So you can do a reversal special, but you just cannot reversal normal. All right, now we're going to talk about uh, move properties on Wake Up. So, for example, Batman's parry. It parries highs, high attacks, mid attacks, but it will not parry a low attack. And... Uh, on certain knockdowns, if you do certain attacks before the move is even active, like you see as right there, I counter hit him before the parry came out. It's generally called a meaty. It stuffs the wake up. So Batman, I mean, if you do a move in a certain amount of time, you just gotta look at the advantage you get on the string. You can stuff wake ups like parry. Um, not everybody has a wake up. Some people just have to block longer. Um, some people do have invincible only on wake up. You just have to test and look at things. Next, we're going to talk about uh, just checking. So, pressure is generally really, really strong uh, in this game. So, you can die really, really fast. Often, this game kind of favors offense uh, for some characters. Some characters play more defensively. But if you're stuck in offense, generally uh, to check somebody, checking is like stopping pressure uh, or, you know, stop people from keeping pressure so like for example if batman did low low trait and try to do another string you can check him with a down one down one is usually your fastest button and safest button to check somebody and as after you check somebody and it hits you can keep pressure if you uh you block a check like a down one it's negative and you have to receive the pressure so um next i guess we're gonna go into uh, meter usage now using meter in this game is really like your meter usage in this game is really important so uh one thing the first thing we're going to talk about is i guess it's just roller skate now they talk about this in uh, the tutorial but they don't really go into its uses now there is recovery on the roll so there's some frames where you can't be hit 
um, some frames uh, you can be hit. If you throw somebody that's rolling on wake up, for example, like if you get a knockdown and they try to roll on wake up, you can grab them. But I mean, rolling is used to get through uh, projectiles normally or out of pressure. But as you can see, if you do it at the wrong time, you can get tagged by the projectile. So it's really you have to use this bar wisely. So it's still fairly new. It wasn't in Justice One, so you have to kind of experiment when and how you use your roll. All right, next we're going to talk about how to uh, meter burning your specials or enhancing them or EXing them. Um, those terms you'll hear in other games uh, or used when you watch tournaments and on commentary. When someone enhances or moves, they're spending a bar to give it an additional effect. So, like, for example, Batman's Grapple, when you EX it, you can continue the combo. If you don't EX it, regular. Uh, you just do the regular move and knocks down, but if you spend a bar, you can continue the combo. Now, some moves, uh, you have a certain amount of time to cancel it. Each EX move is different. So, for example, Batman's Batarangs, you cannot cancel the meter burn full screen. You have to use it before it even gets to that distance. Okay. Um, another way to use your meter um, is for uh, armor, I guess. So, some moves have armor uh, by themselves. Um, others gain it through effects like Bane's trait of the poison, but um, universally every character and their back three and forward three, uh, their forward and back heavy attacks, you can put a, a hit of armor by pressing your meter burn button after you've inputted it, and it'll take one hit. Okay, so you can armor through attacks, or you can use it to dash through and maybe get a different punish. But most of the time, if it can connect, you want to go for it because it leads to high damage. Starting with the heavy attack will lead to high damage. So there's only one hit of armor, and if you try to dash out of it, it can run out. But that's a one way to open people up, and you can use it on people's uh, wake-ups. Um, another, way, another way you can use meter, which is new, is air teching. So you can air tech up, or you can air tech back. So, I mean, there's plenty of uses for your meter in this game. Managing your meter is very important. I mean, it could help you get a comeback. There's no real natural comeback factors, um, like, that are really apparent. It's just, you know, how you use your meter. Get your mix-ups in, get your damage in. Um, clashing is important. Uh, do the tutorial, make sure you learn how, what, uh, clashing is, um, in the, in the, your last health bar. Um, but yeah, just uh, that kind of concludes the basic tutorial of Injustice. Hopefully this helps you create or avoid mix-up, start pressure, understand frame data. Um, I can do follow-up videos if you want. If you have troubles dealing with a certain character or a certain mix-up and you don't know how to lab it up, just send me a message and um, I'll try to figure it out for you. Um, there's, I mean, there's a lot of characters, 29 characters right now, including Darkseid, plus um, additional DLC. Um, so, you know, I'll keep making videos if um, something is too strong or people have issues dealing with it. So, uh, this is Master Reginald uh, signing out. Uh, thanks for watching. Hope this helps.